Guys, you've seen the clips. You've witnessed the hair. Now we get to talk about it. Today, we are watching Chuck Norris's movie, Forest Warrior, directed and created by his brother, Aaron Norris. Yeah, that's right. The, the stunt double slash brother of Chuck decided to make a movie, and this is that movie. I cannot wait, so let's go, because this is Red Eye Reviews. We start with Chuck Norris, a Native American, like, hippie, hippie guy, He's wearing natural leather, running in slow motion. Honestly, it's like if Louis L'Amour wrote a novel about Los Angeles lifeguards. Did anybody understand that reference? <laughs> because let me tell you, it was literally a flawless reference. We start with a story about a man. A man who loved a girl and that girl who loved some trees. They wanted his trees for railroad ties, but he wouldn't sell and he wouldn't deal. These evil dudes want to cut down some of those trees to make stuff out of wood. It's disgusting. And Chuck is like, not my forest, bruh. So he fights all these cowboys in the rain. That's that's probably what the movie Coyote Ugly is about. But I don't know. I've never seen it. But he gets shot. He falls down a cliff. He falls into a river. Never saw his wife again. But he never left the mountain, lying on the riverbank in the wilderness. He was cold on the riverbanks. He was dressed in the finest New Mexico roadside gift shop outfit that money could buy. So all these animals gather around. They hope his traumatic experience has given him Dr. Doolittle powers so that our friend Mr. Bear here can finally be cured of his spastic clapping syndrome. Sadly, the power only brought him back to life. Uh, however, it did turn him into a shapeshifter. Kind of like Animorphs. That's a badass book series. And he would stay forever to protect the mountain. We cut to current time. The town is having a meeting to discuss cutting down some trees. <laughs> they've, they've, they've never learned. They have never learned. And the town is against the tree destruction. You know, but thankfully they love good old redneck music and high caloric food. Well, my dad's water too. And he'd never, ever cut down those old trees. I don't see anybody blowing into a jug with three X's on it, but it is pretty good. Meanwhile, this little girl's alcoholic father shows up and he's like, Hey, I'm supposed to be in the band. I'm the guy who blows into the old jug with booze in it, but it's, instead I drink all the booze. He's a lot of fun. And that night, that drunk's daughter prays to Chuck Norris. She's like, protect my drunk daddy and save the trees. And Chuck is like, I will save them trees. But a pox on your drunken father. Jug blowing's a serious craft and he ain't got the stuff. I just wanted to say a pox. That's, that's the whole reason I wrote that. The next day, the kids are off to go camping in the mountains alone. It's insane. It's, it's like stand by me. Only instead of finding a dead guy, they'll find the Texas Ranger who can morph into a bear. So the children wander through the forest. They look very underprepared. They're just walking through the brush like poison ivy isn't a thing. Our children stumble across a treehouse and throwing away caution against hobos or some of those off-grid livers, they just wander in. They find a baby bear. And because this is an old movie, the children actors actually got to play with a baby bear. Ow, oh, I'm jealous. It was a different time. It really was. At one point, the loggers established that they are evil. People who like things made out of wood are evil. Just to reiterate this, they see the baby bear and they're like, let's kill it. <laughs> let's, let's kill that bear because we are evil. However, before they can, an eagle flies down. It turns into a hippie and it kicks their asses. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! 
Chuck is like, children, I am an eagle, but I am also a man. A man who could break guns. And a man who could buy L'Oreal for men hair products. Fear my wrath. However, the next day, they go fishing. Hey, Rags. Hey, what are you smelling at? <laughs> they mess with a baby bear again. And it's about this time we start to realize that their parents are horrible parents. I'm all for letting your kid be a kid, but who lets your kid go camping alone in the mountains where a logging company is about to start chopping up some trees? Also, speak of the devils, the loggers re-enter the chat and they're like, remember, we're evil? It's time to go blow up that tree house. Yeah, let's blow it up for no reason except to show that we hate children. The Nature Master 5000 shows back up and he's like, ha, huh, that is no way to act. Consider yourself uninvited to Mr. Skunk's birthday bash this year. He flies to the treehouse. We rescue the girl just in time. The boys who are off doing boy things hear the explosion they run back. They violently thrash around in the debris like little wild monkeys. And after that very lackluster search attempt, they race back to tell some adults. The adults show up. They're all distraught, even though their lack of parenting and supervision might have contributed to this issue in the first place. But she shows back up. Her father's there. He's like, I will never drink again. And just like every alcoholic in the movies, he sobers up with zero issues and no withdrawal at all. Somewhere else, the lumberjacks start heading out to cut down the trees. And now, now all of a sudden, the town has a problem with it. I mean, sure, we loved the free food and redneck band with no jug blower. But now, well, now we don't agree with your decisions. We prepare by watching the Home Alone movies and Star Wars Return of the Jedi just to see how the Ewoks killed people. And, much like Home Alone, the bad guys turn in to total idiots. Move it. Hustle, hustle, hustle. We gotta move this long. I think somebody's trying to pull my chain. Environmentalists. It. It's the green weenies. They fall for all the tricks. They have potatoes in tailpipes. A potato. Potato. Two of them. One potato, two potatoes. They break their antennae. They pop their tires. They try to murder a man by dragging him through the forest attached to a tree trunk and throwing him off a cliff. <laughs> you know. Typical innocent child pranks. One kid floods the handheld radio with some ballin' music. And our dumb dumb loggers are like, well, shucks. That that did it. Yeah, if only these radios were capable of multiple channels, but alas, they're not. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to dance our asses off. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's jam out. Uh, lumber who? Lumber who? Not, not me. Man, if only we had a jug blower in our squad, this would be a real party. Now, oh, I know, I know you need one, sir. Get me a, a first aid kit. Our dude somehow survived the fall that almost killed Aragorn. He climbs back up the mountain. He... Okay, I mean, he is starting to look real Bilbo baggins -y with some serious one-ring withdrawal. At one point, Chuck Norris shows up and he beats this guy up again. Like an Englishman? <laughs> it's about this time that it's starting to feel real bully-like. Go pick on another Animorph, like that one kid who can turn into a rat. Go pick on him. 
but our little boy finishes off the old man. But uh, okay, no, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna re say that. I don't like the way I said that. The boy kicks the old man in the teeth. <laughs> that's that's much better. Back at Logger Camp headquarters, they're all danced out. They're all danced out. They decide to go cut down some trees. And cue the best scene in the history of cinema. America. Yeah. If, if it was anybody else, I would take issue. But it's Chuck Norris and I see nothing wrong with this. The Lumberjacks try to fight him with a bunch of giant sticks they brought. And he's like, bro, you can't use wood against the wood master. I protect wood for a living. Meanwhile, our main baddie is running away because I guess blowing up a child's treehouse is a big no-no. So the cops may or may not be after him. Chuck catches up with that guy and he's like, hey man, you're a real piece of poo. And I always remembered you as a piece of poo. I remember you when you were a child and you tried to burn down the forest. And we're like, okay, Chuck, you're probably reaching a little bit there. But then our guy is like, yeah, I remember that. That was a good time. Yeah, I, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling hippies and that baby bear. So Chuck turns into a bear and he's like, hey, will you love the forest now? And he does. And that works. He falls down a bunch of stuff and he loves the forest because he knows there's a real life Smokey the Bear walking around putting out his fires. I just had a vision. I feel reborn. From the Redwood Forest, I feel love just flowing through me. I Our movie ends with the community rebuilding the treehouse. This dumb kid is sweeping the dirt off of the dirt. I, I'm not really sure what he's doing. But that is it. So let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. He never made it back to her then? He never saw his wife again. He never saw his wife again because we did not have the budget to cast her. Lost in the eternal darkness, lying on the riverbank in the wilderness. He was in the river all night. His skin looking like a grape that you forgot in the back of your produce drawer. Putting dirt on a fire to put it out? Bruh, you're, you're doing it wrong. You gotta pee on it. You gotta pee on it. Aim for the base of the flame. Can't think of anything you might have forgotten, eh? This could be important, you know? Oh, yeah, good thinking. This toilet paper, good thinking. Yeah, now... Now we could go TP all those squirrels' houses and just be menaces of the woods. Well, I'm a dog and this is my butthole. I'll stretch my body and shove it right in your face. Whoa! This sounded like an explosion! I don't have time to get help! Can't you see I'm busy beating up this piece of wood? Everything will be fine. I'm really sorry you never saw your wife again. Hey, whoa! I, I only saved your life. You gotta go and rub my dead wife in my face? So I could hear her screaming, but before I could get to her, she went under. She was there, cold and wet, and waiting for me. Okay. 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 Uh, you probably you probably could have phrased that a little less creepy and sexual. You got to wait for Thor and the radio before we can start cutting the trees. I'm going to get the tractor down and warm her up. Wish we could just cut down them trees. Yeah, me too. You got to give it to these guys. <laughs> they really like cutting down trees. They're really just itching for the next chop. Gosh, I, I wish we could cut down some trees right now. That is it. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel.
Like the video, leave some comments down below. Just type some stuff out with some words, this and that, and Gordon Wood and all that. What's your major, dude? Sorry. Uh, if, if you want the power to vote on future movie reviews, I have a Patreon. It's down below. It's a way to support the channel. A huge shout out to all my patrons. I say it every video. I will continue to say it every video. I think you're all great and you're amazing. Thank you so much. Link down below. Discord community down below. Merch store down below. I will see you next time. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy.